why we in this circumstance are asking for one of these tax amendments. I'm then going to go through what this proposed OSNV zone will both allow and require, and then I'll end with a quick summary about why we've chosen not to just use the Unified Development Ordinance as it already exists. So that's what's about to come up here. First, what is the text amendment? Well, here's what it is. It's a tool. So it's a decision by the town council to expand the UDO. It's inserting new material among the material that's already there. It doesn't trample on any of the existing rules or technicalities of the UDO. It uses the language of the UDO as it is simply adds a new zone to the list of zones. Every zone, every land in the town that's privately developed belongs to some zone or another on the big zoning map. This would create a new one we call OSMV. The purpose is to enable a walkable village pattern that lets us get at really big scale open space, the preservation of the vistas, and a variety of housing choices, as Tom alluded to in a manner that fulfills the comprehensive plan. And then we subject ourselves to extra requirements, the required form-based code and a development agreement. Now, what is the text amendment not? It is not a rezoning. The action the town council is being asked to consider first just simply creates the zone. It does not map it to any land in the town. We expect to come back and do that as a subsequent step. But this simply creates the ability to propose the rezoning along with that customized form-based code and development agreement. Now, this is uh, not our idea. This is an idea that was anticipated by the framers of the Unified Development Ordinance. Right, this is a screenshot from the ordinance itself. And right there in the ordinance it says that from time to time we expect it will be necessary to amend that document and it specifies the procedure, and it specifies who is eligible to initiate this, and the list of people that are eligible include an owner of land in the town, like Mr. Count. And then it goes on to describe a set of factors that should be weighed in considering a text amendment. These are the, and there's a list of them there, you can see this is in Article 3, Part D, Subsection 3, under text amendments. And you can read the list, there's seven things to consider, and all of those are addressed by our application. Now, why are we proposing to do this in this circumstance? First of all, for those who don't know it, there is a group of lands controlled by Mr. Couch and his companies that he has included within our plan, 973 acres. And on those lands, we propose to create a family of compact, complete, connected villages set within a deeply green preserve of field and forest. And in the process of building part to save the rest, protecting a vast network of open spaces and long vistas. There are many ideas in a plan this big. Now I'm going to hit on just a few of them to explain why they affect the UDO. But I won't go into detail on all of them. We will, however, post this on the website. The biggest of these big ideas is the preservation of the vast green network. It's a large proposal, a large application, a big map, but its bigness is the key to its potential benefit. Because when we draw on a canvas this large, we can make connected open spaces that are larger and more continuous and more environmentally and ecologically effective than would otherwise be the case from piecemeal low density development, one smaller piece at a time. That means that when we create a, a flyway for birds and pollinators, it can be large and connected and effective. When we create a flowway for water quality, it is connected. When we address the seasonally affected lands that affect wildlife, the effectiveness of this is so much greater when we have the potential to draw on the larger canvas. And that is why we come to you with such a large amount of land to be considered at once. Other key ideas include holding on to the food culture, the making of food, the farm to table tradition in Summerfield. Another key idea 
is that the public spaces come first. So we design them as quality addresses and special places to be, and then fit the real estate development to it. In the villages, there will be an integrated web of walkable green tree-lined streets, and then somewhere to walk to, or make a short driving trip to, or take a bike ride to, within the villages. People, many people express to us the desire to have somewhere to go in their neighborhood, and this would create it. Next, perhaps the most important one for tonight, a key idea is that there should be a full range of housing choices uh, to own or rent at various prices and sizes and formats, and that includes the traditional single-family detached house, some on really big lots, some on normal size lots, but it also includes cottage courts and bungalows, it includes townhouses and mansion-style multifamily, which have four or eight units in them, and yes, also street-oriented garden-style multifamily development. That's the apartments. And the great effort's been made to first ensure that the design of these will be worthy of Summerfield, and second, to limit where in the town they are allowed to be and how many of them there are allowed to be. So all of this would be covered under the application for rezoning. And along with it would come centers for each village and their village greens. The, the idea of linear parks and greenways that have trails and connect the trail system. Again, only possible when we have this big canvas. This map kind of illustrates why the connections that really need to be made in the regional and local trail system can only be made when we draw this big map and think about it in a larger prospect. They are also made possible by the introduction of sewer in a way that would never be possible without municipal water and sewer. Let me just say, water and sewer provision here is a condition of the rezoning. If for some reason water and sewer does not materialize, the whole thing unwinds. There's the, the OSMV cannot be used without a water and sewer system. The last of the big ideas is that there would be a whole suite of strict quality controls, architectural standards, building standards, landscape standards, street standards, so that the place that's built looks like the drawings. That is not something that you can get from within the normal confines of state law or typical zoning ordinances. It is only something you can get when an applicant subjects themselves voluntarily to this extra layer of, de of detail and degree of control. So that's why it's, not, it's important to look at what this will allow and what it will require. First, OSMV as proposed can only be used for an application that includes at a minimum 750 acres. Second, it requires, like the other open space districts within the UDO, a detailed sketch plan which shows where, what, what goes where and what the pattern would be. It requires street thoroughfare standards. The most important one is probably the fourth bullet, the development regulation or the form-based code that Brad referred to a while ago. And then specific things must be here, according to OSMB, and one of them is a development agreement. I'll explain what that is momentarily. We also, in the process of rezoning, have to establish a list of the permitted and excluded uses, and then must impose upon all future development within that new zone its own more detailed approval process and special site plan reviews for each and every phase. This means instead of just having one scrutiny at the time of rezoning, there is a second scrutiny for every little subphase sub at every point along the development over a period of many years. Dover. So the, uh, this is the last, last slide. Okay. The, right on the end. Um, the development regulations come with that form-based code as an attachment there too. The development agreement is a binding contract between the developer and the town. Uh, it says who's going to do what and by when, and all the promises and obligations that the developer is making to the town and vice versa are in that. So the development agreement is crucial. You've seen this before. This is a summary of a push on the web of all that is proposed under that rezoning. And now, to answer the question of why, if that's what we're trying to build, we can't use the UDO as it is. Well, if you like this picture, guess what? 
we can't build that under the UDO as it is. Just one or two requirements alone, like the requirement that the primary thoroughfare accessing the commercial part of a mixed use development cannot go through a residential area, makes what you see in that picture illegal. But there are also the setbacks, the lot sizes, the sewer requirement, and many other things. Ms. Dover, I'm, I'm going to have to cut you off now. I'm, All right. We, we're familiar with this. We, we've uh, <laughs> in the press release. Some of us have watched some of the public meetings. So I, I just want to get on with the, uh, the, the public hearing aspect of this. Um, and, so we have got to be able to present our case. Ask the applicants. Mr. Charles, do you please sit down? I'd be happy to answer questions as we get along. Yeah, I, we, we come back and ask you questions, Mr. Charles. I have over, over 50 people that want to speak, and I want to give them a chance to speak. Well, the purpose of uh, they, they're not the ones that have to hear the presentation. The board is the one who has to make the decision. They're here to voice their comments for and against. Okay, uh, so um, the, this for the audience uh, information, the plan that Mr. Count just presented is a plan that's very interesting, uh, interesting to me, and I'm sure interesting to a lot of people. But one thing uh, that uh, is not up for discussion tonight is that particular plan. If this text amendment is approved, uh, by the town council, Mr. Couch very likely will file an application to um, uh, rezone his property to uh, this particular district. But uh, he is under no obligation to file uh, his uh, rezoning request using this particular plan. He can change it if he wants. Uh, I doubt that he will, but this he just need to know that, it's, that he does not have any legal obligation to file this, this particular plan that Mr. Dover has presented. Um, rules for the speaker. Um, each speaker will be out allowed at three minutes. I'm going to call speakers up in the order that they. We have one more speaker. Mr. Tell, I'm sorry, but. Uh, this is the I understand your, your concern, Tom, but does anyone of this staff who doesn't know what the application is right now that been living under a rock for the last year? So I think I think you'll have an opportunity to speak at some point again. But Mr. Fuller's got the got the floor now. Thank you, uh, Counselor. Uh, speakers will not be permitted to poll the audience. They will not be permitted to ask anyone who speaks before or after any questions. And um, you will not be, the planning board will, will not be answering questions that you might raise. We may raise those questions among ourselves when we start to talk. So with that, uh, I'm going to call the first speaker, uh, 